You're listening to the Faith Breathes Hope podcast, accelerated edition number 19. Today, I speak with wife, mom, and founder at The Marked Co., Jordan Alvarez, on standing in who God created you to be. Welcome to the Faith Breathed Hope podcast, accelerated edition, where we gain inspiration and motivation from others who share their stories of renewing hope and discovering purpose in any circumstance. I am Christina Reisinger, and today you will be encouraged by another tremendously inspirational topic that will embolden you to release your fear, begin taking small steps forward, and move into your God-given purpose to live and serve in this life. Join me for today's story. Hey, Jordan, how are you today? Hi, I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. And I am so excited to have you on Faith Breathed Hope. Uh, so the first thing I have everybody do is to just tell the audience who you are, uh, anything interesting about you that they might find fun. Oh, interesting. Oh, that's a high order. Uh, well, I am a, a believer and I live just south of Dallas with my husband and my daughter. My husband's a pastor. And so we were very active and um, love being a part of our community and our church. And for the last nearly decade, I've been an entrepreneur of various endeavors. And I've been an entrepreneur where I've, that's all I've done. And then I've been an entrepreneur on the, the back end of a full-time job or career. And, um, with every, with every endeavor that I've, I've taken on, I've realized that, wow, there is a purpose and the design that God has given each human being. And I've, I've just become really, really, really passionate about helping other people step into that. And so, um, I work and own the marked co and that's essentially a place where I'm going to teach you how to grow your business, but I'm also going to teach you how to live into the purpose that God has designed for his people. And I think your job and your place in the marketplace has a lot to do with that. And so that's, that's a little bit about me. That's awesome. Yeah, I um, I love what you're doing. I think a lot of us, I am figuring out, are what you call multi-passionate. We have to jump into things, all the different things. But the most important uh, part of that is that we are trying to honor God in whatever it is that we're doing. So um, now everybody has a story, and I know that uh, you have a story. So would you like to share a little bit about yourself and maybe how you um, have gone through things in life, but how God has shown up in those things. Yeah. So it's so neat to look back over my life as a believer because now on, you know, the other side of it, 21 years on the other side of it, I realize God's hand has been in so many different events in my life or, or all of the events in my life, but some are just very clear and visible to me. Um, and all of those things have paved a way for the way he's working in my life now. And so looking back over that last specifically decade, uh, it's just incredible to me how even through sorrow and through hardship and especially through joy, the Lord has just been so faithful to just continue to preserve his spirit in me and continue to refine what he's doing in my life and, um, in my family's life. And then coolly to me in my business. And so starting back in, you know, 2008, 2009, I was in college and I went to a, this is, this is a little bit confusing for some people, but I was in an undergrad program on a seminary campus. So I was one of the first classes. I was in one of the first classes to go through it. And I just assumed that I would be in a church for the rest of my life. I would find some sort of role in a church. And as I continued through that degree, I realized like, man, I'm wired a little bit different than these people. And uh, I think about business and I think about um, entrepreneurship and I'm passionate about creating things. And, and I just am not like that much of a theologue. I'm not an academic. I'm not, you know, uh, overly bookish. And so I continued my degree and I finished up and, um, all of those thoughts just really led to confusion. I didn't know what I wanted to do, who I wanted to be, uh, what impact or mark I wanted to make in the world for the glory of God. And so 
uh, I went to, I, I married my husband who is a pastor here in the community we live in. And I worked from home for a little bit. And then I was like, you know what? I have this degree that I'm not using it. I'm going to go get a teaching education. And so I went and got a teaching certification and I realized, man, I don't know that I necessarily want to be in the classroom. And it was in this season that I was in the, in the classroom. I taught a preschool special education, which was a precious, precious two years, but it was very eye opening also that i maybe not necessarily with preschoolers or with special education, but I just didn't have any desire to be um, your typical public school teacher. And in this season, that two year period of teaching, I experienced three miscarriages in um, probably a 16 to 18 month period. And that alongside realizing, I don't know that I'm particularly called for this role as a teacher, a public school teacher that in that season even more clearly told me that I also did not want to give my time to um, someone else's 24 babies and teachers are a gift from God. <laughs> the, the women that um, brought me up and the men once I got to high school in my education are foundational to who I am today and many were believers and uh but I just recognized that wasn't who God created me to be <laughs> and so I'm going through this I'm experiencing this alongside the sorrow of miscarriage and I just realized I want to be present for my family whenever God decides to give me a family whether that's through our bi biological children or whether that's through adoption and it was that moment that I said, I've got to figure out something to get out of the classroom so that I am available to be with a family whenever God decides that that's something he's going to give me. And that started my, um, the, the, the biggest portion of my entrepreneurial endeavors. I picked up a, a job working from, you know, my cell phone, I, I sold skincare and I ended up matching my teaching income. And then I was like, man, people really don't know how to market to their perfect customers or how to build their online presence online or their personal brand. And so then I shifted into the March Co. And for the entirety of my uh, daughter's life, I've been home with her. And I know that that's not something that everybody desires. And I know that that's something that um, everybody doesn't isn't fit for, and that's fine. But I recognized early on, and I'm just so, so, so thankful to the Lord's goodness and just um, his protection in all of that season and uh, recognizing that that really difficult journey through miscarriage and then the fear and the things that come alongside having a healthy pregnancy uh, just really ended up being a, a blessing like again God's providence in showing me and revealing to me his his will through his word and the time that I spend with him and I look back and I'm just so thankful for um, the things we experienced of course not the loss of our babies we wish more than anything Ellie was number four here on earth with us but um, the Lord is good he gives and takes away and he is still good and um, so that now is what in the Mark company, like that's driving a lot of what we're doing in the Mark Co is helping you to recognize the Lord is good. And um, we live in a world filled with sin, but he still has purposes for his people. He still has um, a design for this world that needs redeeming. And he wants to use you as an agent in that. And that's an incredible, incredible thing that I'm so thankful that I get to take part in. That's so lovely. You know, I, I'm so thankful that you talk about this, this idea of being wired differently because my whole life I felt like I was wired differently <laughs> as well. I think a lot of people may think that more so than, you know, they let on. Mm -hmm. um, but just knowing that it's okay not to follow suit with everything that is normal. I mean, I, I remember you and I are kind of uh, similar where I had an undergrad and then uh, decided for certain reasons that I was going to go uh, be certified as a teacher as well. I taught middle school for seven years and, you know, I loved it. 
Um, but then there was that, that point where the, you know, your life changes, that rite of passage, you move to a different space and became a mom for a little while and then started my, my journey of entrepreneurship as well. And, um, you know, when you were talking about trying to, um, be who God created you to be, you know, it came back to me and I listened to a lot of, um, pastors and, and, and people on uh, podcasts and everything. And I love Joyce Meyer. And she uh, had talked several times, I think, about how she at one point felt like she needed to grow tomatoes or something like that. Like her neighbor was growing tomatoes and, you know, her tomatoes just would not grow and she didn't understand. And yeah. <laughs> Have you heard that? So she no. said, no, I haven't. Continue. Continue. <laughs> so she, she said she prayed over her tomatoes. She didn't understand why her neighbor's tomatoes were beautiful and hers were not because she prayed over her tomatoes. And, mm-hmm. and she realized that the Lord came in and he's like, you know what? It's like, I never told you to grow tomatoes. Basically, you know, stay in your lane, stay in what I created you for. And I think so many times, uh, we're trying, what, what is that saying? We're trying to put a um, square peg in a round hole. And I've often felt like that myself, like even with the coaching, um, knowing that the, the traditional idea of coaching follows a certain formula. You know, the formula is not hard. It's easy. But for whatever reason, for me, it was really hard to fit into that formula. <laughs> it's always called to be different, you know? And I think so many people, um, out there may be secretly like that. They may secretly feel like they have a square peg that, uh, you know, they're trying to fit into a round hole and just knowing that God gives us permission to be who he makes us to be, who he's created us to be. It's just an amazing thought, isn't it? (laughs) You know, with that, I think about my early efforts at building a business and you have all of these, like you said, like the formula is easy. The coaching formula is easy to follow. And the same goes for the formula for building a social media platform is easy. The formula for email marketing is easy. The for, like all of these formulas are so easy and they promise, you know, you do X and you'll get Y results mm-hmm. and that's fine. And if that's the case for your business and what you're doing, that's, that's perfect. But what I've learned in the last, um, really the last, even few months is when I say that I am working for a greater purpose than my business growing or working for a greater purpose than increasing the number of opens on an email marketing campaign. What I mean is that my purpose and what I'm doing in the marketplace or what I'm doing with small business owners falls under the umbrella of God's ultimate purpose. And so one thing that's really been hard for me is Um, I've had to lay down the exaltation of myself because over and over and over again, I've, um, I've battled the feeling of like, well, what if I help somebody who is more influential down the road than me? Or what if I coach someone who ultimately becomes a bigger piece in your ministry for the world than me? And that's told me a lot about where my heart is. That's told me, well, are you concerned, Jordan, with your exaltation? Or are you consult- concerned with God's exaltation? Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, like I've had to say, God, whatever it is you have um, placed in the next however many years you allow me to live, how many days you allow me to live, like I submit that to you. If it means that it doesn't look like my dream or what I believe should happen for my life. I submit that to you and I want your ultimate purpose to be fulfilled on the earth. And just as long as I'm a a player in that, you know, even, even if it's a small player, that's something that I've had to submit over and over and over. Like God kill whatever fleshly in me rises up constantly to want to, to, be exalted or be the influential person or be the voice that helps people like, like just use me in the way that you would use me. And I think that goes back to that, uh, looking at other people and saying, Hey, well, she's doing this and it's working for, maybe I should do that. And it's working for me. Like, that's not the case. That's not the case, especially in God's kingdom. Like 
the, the wisdom of the world is foolishness, you know? Yeah. And I think that should apply to Christians in, um, business, but also in life and in family, you know, the way you raise your family doesn't look like the, the other people around you probably. Mm-hmm. Yes. And this ladies is why Jordan is our speaker for the kingdom women summit this, uh, January. You can catch oh, we're, so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have, we're speaking on a uh, kingdom business and I'm so excited to hear more from her. So, but yes, truly, you know, there is a lot of comparison amongst women. I think maybe I don't, and I'm not sure as much about men because I'm not a man, but, um, you know, I know a lot of women tend to compare and this, this whole thing about social media uh, really just opens the door wide for that. You know, we post all of the glorious things. I mean, I think now it's becoming more commonplace to uh, post a lot more of the mess, <laughs> but um, you know, we generally see all of the wonderful things and how people are doing it. And they're saying, Hey, come follow me. This is how I do X, Y, and Z. And it's proven very successful for me. And then you have a lot of people hanging on in, in the wings and they're saying, you know what? It's just not that simple. Everything looks glorious for you. I'm looking at this fa fabulous uh, photograph. You know, you look like you're having the time of your life. It looks like you are financially and abundantly blessed in all kind of areas. But for me, even though I try to do these things, it's just not working. And maybe that comes like you're saying from the space of knowing that we are all made for different purposes, you know, and in different uh, times in our life, we're supposed to rise up to serve other people through what we have been given in our gifts and our talents. And um, so if somebody is in that space and they say, you know what, the, it just doesn't matter how hard I'm trying. I just cannot be her or I cannot be him. You know, it, they tell me it's so simple. They tell me all I have to do is X, Y, and Z, but it just doesn't work for me. You know, what is some encouragement that you would give? I mean, we've already said that maybe you have to, to, to approach the Lord and say, Hey, you know, what is my purpose here? What did you make me for? Um, but what are some kind of words of encouragement that you can give for that person that they feel like the odd man out, they feel like an oddball, they feel like, you know, everything works for everybody else, but it doesn't work for them. <laughs> Yeah. First of all, I would like to say you are not alone. Yes. <laughs> um, I don't speak for everyone, but I can certainly speak for myself whenever I say I have been where you are at. And secondly, I would like to say that of course, of course, of course, social media is a highlight reel. Like we know that social media and even um, you might be looking at a business coach who is talking about her success or his success and where he's been and where he is now. And, and they, it's a sales page. They, their goal is to get you as a customer and they want to show a clear path from where they were potentially where you are to where you could be. Mm -hmm. That is a like weight loss products. Um, the food boxes at the store, it is a marketing strategy. And so understanding that and being gracious to that and allowing yourself to, to think through and process that under the filter of understanding this is a marketing strategy and there's nothing wrong with a marketing strategy, but there is something wrong with you identifying with that and then defining your worth based on it. So we need to be able to separate a marketing strategy from something that is telling us who we are and what we're worth. And for a believer, the word of God tells you who you are and what you are worth. You are a child of God bought by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And so when we look at these things, social media, um, someone's personal brand that looks like very, you know, authentic and genuine to who they are. And we need to understand that's a highlight reel and a marketing strategy. And it's okay for them to have a highlight reel and a marketing strategy. It's not okay. It's actually sin for you to base your identity and your worth on that. And I, um, like I mentioned before, have been where you are. I like even this morning before this podcast started, there was a few minutes and I filled it 
scrolling my social media feeds. And I think we need to put on and remember that all things are permissible to believers. All things are permissible. And it's okay for you to have a social media presence. It's okay for you to market your business or your products or whatever it is on social media. But it's not okay for that to take the place of your worship. And when we place our identity and when we say my enoughness, who I was created to be is based on what someone else says on social media or in their sales page, you've walked into sin. And, um, like this is, I'm preaching to the choir here. I'm not, (laughs) I'm not even, (laughs) uh, and so understanding that and understanding that it's, not sin to market your business. And let's think about sitting in a Bible study with the closest accountability in your life. The people who are allowed to have a voice in what you do or don't do are allowed to offer accountability to you. Your wise counsel, your, it's for us, our life group. Our life group is my wise counsel. And then our uh, staff of pastors is, is, you know, also wise counsel. They have a say in my life. They get to decide, you know, Hey, that's sin. You should probably turn from that. Like here's some scripture to support and scripture to encourage your heart in the season. Um, Even sitting in that group, there's fear about confessing your mess or talking about the ugly or Mm -hmm. um, repenting of sin that you've committed. So why in the world, when people have a worldwide platform on social media, would that same fear not exist? You're not seeing all of the the mess and the in-between and the dirty and the fact that, you know, our kids are up in our face during work and we're struggling with the same things you're struggling with because they're e- those are things that are even hard to say to our closest accountability. And so when we understand and we can view social media and the marketing world that surrounds us with that lens and with the lens of the gospel that says Christ and his blood and his sacrifice has made you enough, your redemption, your standing before God depends on him. It doesn't depend on who you are and what you believe you are based on someone's social media platform. That's whenever we can step into who God has actually created us to be. Whenever we understand like, okay, my weakness is actually my strength. My weakness is actually where God's glory is going to get to, to shine through. Um, And it's sad because I see people constantly, like we see teenagers and youth growing up in this social media saturated world and believing that they have to be a certain type of person or show a certain amount of skin in order to be loved or appreciated. Uh, It's just, it's sad. It is really, really, really sad. And, um, but as believers, we have hope. We have the opportunity to come beside them and say, Hey, this doesn't define you mm-hmm. and um, the number of likes or how quickly your business is growing or how quickly your influence is gaining traction doesn't define you. Mm-hmm. Who God said you are defines you. And, you know, even if you influence one person in the course of your, your lifetime, it's going to, it's going to end and it's going to look to the world like foolishness, like ugh, one person, what does that matter? But you have no idea what that looks like in like, under the surface of what God has going and working um, for his glory. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So, you know, and that's one of the things that I've had to come, you know, to terms with is saying, you know what, I'm doing what I'm doing right now out of obedience because I believe that this is what the Lord wants me to do. And, you know, if, if I, reach hundreds and hundreds of people or thousands of people, then that, you know, to God be the glory. But if I only reach one person, you know, and one person says, you know what, the words, the the, the effort made a difference in my life, you know, I believe, then that's, that's what God means it to be. And that's, that's enough. And it's hard to think that, especially if you have a l- really high aspirations and you you just want to change the world as I feel like, you know, so many people want to do now, you know. But, um, yeah, I will say you were talking about looking over, you know, to social media and how you compare and you look and you say, hey, um, I'm supposed to wear 
this or I'm supposed to act like this or whatever. And that is one of the big things um, that I really want to get deeper into as we go into these Kingdom Women Summits is uh, this identification for yourself uh, in the Lord, the validation that we have comes from the Lord, not from other people, uh, especially with our children. You know, for us growing up, uh, or at least for me, you're younger than me, but uh, growing up, you know, we looked at magazines, you know, magazine articles. I remember uh, for me, I'm a, I'm a photographer as well. And so this is where I got a lot of the inspiration, you know, through uh, all the different uh, fashion magazines, you know, but then I look at it as a mother. And I don't want my daughter to look at these things, these images, and think that that's who she has to be if she's any good. You know, I want her to love herself and, and be proud of who God has made her to be without having to compare herself to the world. And uh, I, I think that that is a very, very um, big thing that we need, need to dive into. The other thing I wanted to mention is that, um, you know, maybe there's there's a point too where we have to realize that we're human and so when these thoughts enter our our minds we don't have to necessarily uh feel so guilty and tear ourselves down we just realize that hey you know what i do need to work on my heart a little bit more and and say you know what it's it's okay that this thought came in uh, i i was a little jealous for a split second but i'm going to work on trying to uh be thankful for this person and, 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 you know, thankful that they are enjoying their life because God wants them to enjoy their life too. And I, that's, that's kind of difficult, isn't it? When we see people who have what we want and, you know, there's a little bit of envy there sometimes and, or maybe a lot of times, I don't know where you, you feel like, well, why not me? <laughs> but being able to step up and say, you know what, I'm, I'm really proud of this person. I think that uh, I'm happy for them that that's a big deal. <laughs> yeah. And I really believe it goes back to what I briefly mentioned um, at the very beginning of the podcast is just submitting your plans under the authority of who God is and his ultimate plan for creation. And looking at someone else's profile and Filling that spike of jealousy. That's another thing. It's just even identifying that it's jealousy or envy. That's hard. Whenever it's like, well, I, I just want my stuff to look like hers. <laughs> well, there's some envy in that. And so like being able to recognize even that that is what's taking root in your heart. If you can pull out that root before it really takes ground, that makes room for the spirit to work even more powerfully in you. And so I would say first pray for wisdom in even identifying what jealousy looks like. We're scrolling constantly. We're posting, we're figuring out the best copy. We're figuring out the most beautifully curated images. People are always like, Oh my gosh, your home looks like it's out of a magazine. And I'm like, it's filters like <laughs> to make these things look beautiful. Like, um, and I, I think that we need to be able to say, this is envy. That's what it looks like that I can recognize it in my heart springing up and then discipline ourselves in, in immediately saying, Lord, take that out. Like I want more of your wisdom. I want more of where you would have me go, how you would have me work in this world, how you would have me bring about your gospel in all things. I want more of that. So root out that sin. Mm -hmm. And um, as you continue to do that, you're building that, that muscle, you're building that repentance muscle. And there is going to come a day whenever you see, man, she's killing it. And Lord use her, like give her wisdom. When she sits down to write her copy, Lord, let it be saturated in scripture language. Let it speak to who you are and who you've created her to be like that discipline that muscle building of repentance is going to grow that muscle of gratefulness for what other people are doing. Mm -hmm. And all of that has to do with submitting your plans under the authority of who God is. And so when we say my dreams really don't matter, it doesn't matter what I want to do with my life or what I want to make 
uh, as far as an impact goes in the world. Like it does, none of those things matter if they're not submitted to the ultimate purpose mm -hmm. of God's gospel going into all of the earth and disciples being made. Mm -hmm. And so we submit our dreams, our plans, our things under that authority. And we continue to say like, God, show me jealousy in my heart. Teach me repentance. God, help me remove that so that more of you can come into what I'm doing. We're building that muscle, that gratefulness. It's going, it's going to happen. That's what, that's the result of repentance yes. is gratefulness in your surroundings, like seeing things and God working in ways that you didn't see them before because jealousy was blinding you so badly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and, and initially I think that it may be difficult because we don't like to relinquish that control. But when you do submit and uh, really desire to have your will align with the Lord's will for your life, then it, like you said, it naturally comes, that gratitude comes, that thankfulness comes, that yeah. that willingness to, to love on other people come. And it also um it gives you that, that confidence in who you are in the Lord. Uh, so it, and to put it into perspective, you know, we, we may want, you may see, um, I always thought that this was kind of cool. So you may see uh, an outfit on a mannequin or an outfit on another woman. And, and so you're like, oh my goodness, I love that outfit. It looks fantastic. But then when you try, when you go to the dressing room and it, you know, it could be lights, it could be, you know, what you've had to eat if you feel bloated, whatever it is that day, you know, but that outfit just does not look the yeah. same on you. It could also be your coloring. You know, it took me a long time to realize that I was never going to get a certain kind of hairstyle that I saw that looked fantastic on another woman because I didn't have the same kind of hair. Mm -hmm. uh, as simple as that is, you know, it took me a long time into my adulthood to even realize that. I'm like, it doesn't matter if I dye my hair this color. It doesn't matter if I straighten it or, you know, cut it this way. It's just simply not going to look like that because my hair is curly and, you know, it's curly underneath. So it, <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter how you cut it. It's not going to look the same. And the same thing with the, the mannequin and, and with God. I mean, he has created us to be different on purpose. And once we, you know, learn to just stand in that and, and live in that validation that he gives us then and live in his will, you know, for our lives. And then we, I believe we have more confidence. We have more gratitude, you know, we can love on other people and we also um, give out more forgiveness. Even I think, you know, for, for those people who normally would offend us, and, you know, we, we wouldn't want to lash out at them. And then we start seeing things and saying, you know what, they, they've been through this or that, and they're completely different than us. So it's that, what did you say earlier? Grace, right? <laughs> so I, I love that. Um, <clears throat> Jordan, do you have any, uh, other words of encouragement for, um, you know, we talk, we talk a lot towards ladies, but it could be a man or a woman out there who is just, you know, still kind of struggling with this. Maybe it's this whole idea of perfectionism, trying to live up to um, the dream, <clears throat> whether it's something that they feel like society has uh, put in their head or for whatever reason, their standards growing up have uh, made them feel that this is the way that they have to be. But, uh, you know, maybe they're not, they're not going to be that way, you know, but it's okay. Right. And <laughs> do you have any encouragement for them? So, uh, perfectionism is, uh, <laughs> deadly <Yeah. laughs> Not only is it spirit killing and it, you know, speaks out any element of what the spirit can do in your life through your imperfections. Uh, it's exhausting. It is absolutely exhausting. And I, I, with, with perfectionism in my own life, it shows up often. I had to realize it is the Lord's grace that he's not giving me all of the information every single step right here. But the perfectionist in me said, well, I have to have everything in order before I launch or before I disciple this young girl or before I, I have to have all of these 
ducks in a row before I do all of these things. But, but really, it's providence and it's God's faithfulness that he would only give us one element of it. And in those of your audience who are struggling with perfectionism, in your heart, I know what you're feeling is anxiousness because you don't have all of the pieces and perfectionism holds hands with control. But at the end of the day, God has given us a relationship with him so that he can be in control and hold the full weight of that burden of having to have everything in order, having to have everything aligned, having to have all of the pieces um, laid out exactly like they're supposed to be laid out in the, in the end. And as an encouragement to someone who's like really holding on to that and not wanting to let go of that control, it actually turns out more beautiful in the end. If you do let go of control, if you do allow yourself to say like, this is going to be pretty ugly in the beginning, this is going to be pretty terrible in the beginning because I only have this much of the fullness of what God is planning to do in my life. I have a picture that's even probably smaller than this, mm -hmm. but as you walk in obedience with the Lord and as you say, okay, Lord, you know, I only have this much and I don't know how to use this platform and I don't know how to post this stuff to this group of people. And I don't know how to launch this product. And those are the things in business. It's the same for every element of life. I don't know how to read your word. I don't know. How, as you say, okay, I understand that these are my weaknesses and my insufficiencies. God shows up and says, it doesn't matter. I'm sufficient and gives you another step. Mm -hmm. He says, okay, now you have two pieces. Are you still insufficient? And you're like, yeah, yeah, I'm insufficient. And he says, okay, I'm sufficient. And he shows you another step. And then as you walk in obedience, what ends up happening is way more beautiful because it's a redeem, it's a redeemed person at the end of it. And with a redeemed person comes the redemption also of creation and their surroundings and making everything around them shimmer because it's been touched by a person who's working in the will of God. As you are walking in obedience, you're creating a more beautiful picture because you're allowing God to come into it instead of having to say, well, God, I want to tack you on as a hashtag to the end of whatever my life goals are. <laughs> like as a, as a, you know, life analogy, we're not tacking God on as a hashtag he is the fullness of everything we're doing. Yes. And so obedience is a muscle that you grow, just like repentance. Obedience is a muscle that you grow. And it has to be grown in order to let go of that control, in order to trust, okay, God does have um, the good of his people in mind. God does have my good in mind. Mm -hmm. And over and over and over. And you're going to see that this in picture is so much grander than anything my little brain could have ever dreamed up. So much more beautiful than anything that I could have ever come up with or set as a life plan or a life goal or whatever. And that goes back to the, the beginning of our, our chat with um, God's purposes being planted in the hearts of his people. And so, all of these things that we're, we're running toward goals and the dreams and things, all of those things are rooted in the ultimate purpose of God redeeming his creation and his people. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a way cooler plan than Jordan could have come up with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and for me, I think it goes back to, to this whole idea of God as our father. You know, if you think about the relationship between a parent and a child, it's very much the same where, you know, the kids, have to learn to walk in obedience. Uh, they're naturally uh, rebellious, I think, at least <laughs> mine might be. But I mean, they, they have to learn to walk in obedience and they have to learn to trust that, you know, it's not a saying, hey, don't run out in front of that car because we don't want you to have any fun. You know, don't go get your ball. It's because we see that the car could hurt them, you know, we're trying to protect them and, you know, we want the best for them as their parents. And I feel like God is, is that way as well. He wants the best for us. So he's, his no is not a, a bad thing. It is, it's a good thing. It's a sign of protection and a sign of love. So, um, and you know, it's interesting that you talk about the elements and how he gives us a little bit in here and a little bit there. I just did a, um, 
a podcast. Uh, I went solo. I didn't do an interview, but we talked about stewardship. And I very much have seen that in my own life over the last year about how, uh, you know, we can have these great big dreams and these, these passionate desires that we want it and we feel it, we feel it's huge, but then we're not getting it. (laughs) We're not getting, we're just getting little pieces. And I think that we are called to make sure we take care of those little pieces before he, you know, reveals us. We have to prove that we trust him. We have to prove that we're going to be obedient. We have to prove that we're going to be faithful. And then he says, okay, you know what? I think that you can handle this. Maybe you can handle a little bit more and so on and so forth. And I know with everybody, it's different. You know, some people move faster than other people, but at least that for me and in my own personal life experience has been the key is knowing that I'm, I'm growing, you know, he's, he's giving me that opportunity for growth. So it's pretty exciting when you look at things that way. Anyways, (laughs) So, uh, Jordan, can you tell the audience where they can find you? Of course. So I am on social media platforms as the marked co, or I have my personal platforms as well. Jordan Alvarez, uh, Facebook, I'm the marked co. So forward slash the marked co. And then Instagram, I'm underscore the marked co, or you can just hit me up on my website, the marked co.com. Awesome. Awesome. I'm so glad that you are here on Faith Free Tip today with us. And if you want to hear more from Jordan, make sure that you join us for the Kingdom Women Planning Soon Summit, January 21st through 23rd. You can go to kingdomwomen.net to get your tickets. So thank you so much, Jordan. Uh, so glad to have you here. Thank you for having me. I've really enjoyed our conversation. So everybody, everybody uh, continue to be blessed and bless others. And we will see you next time. And I want to thank you for joining us on Faith Breathe Hope, where you gain inspiration and motivation to renew hope and discover purpose in any circumstance. Please like and share this podcast and give us a review on iTunes. Be blessed.